Welcome to the Marinef Artificial Rock Pool introduction video. My name is Jess Bone and I'm a research assistant for the Marinef project. This video is going to give you a quick background into why artificial rock pools are necessary and show you some existing examples of artificial rock pools from around the world. It will look at the gaps in our knowledge and how this led to the development of experimental designs and the Marinef rock pool design. Man-made construction focuses on a singular function which often is aimed at preserving or improving the infrastructure and livelihoods of people. As a result, much of the development on our coast does not include habitat features that allow nature to find a home. Looking specifically at the intertidal zone, this can include structures like sea walls, breakwaters and groins, made from a variety of materials such as concrete, wood, steel and stone. While the functionality of these structures varies from flood defence to shipping infrastructure, they share common design elements that make it challenging for marine life to thrive. Looking at these examples, you can see that there are a lot of sheer vertical surfaces that are also very smooth. This means that these structures dry quickly during low tide, which means fewer organisms can live there. The smooth surface is also more difficult for certain organisms to attach to, such as seaweeds. If we compare this to a natural shore, we can see the fundamental differences in topographical features. The example here is Kimmeridge, based in Dorset, on the south coast of England. You can see here there are differences to the coastal structures, such as a variety of surface textures with different orientations, cracks and crevices, and pools that retain water at low tide. All these features created patches of refuge for organisms to hide in to avoid the lethal risk of drying out at low tide. If we take a closer look at these microhabitats, I've highlighted in red the sea snails that are preferentially using these patches of water to take refuge in at low tide compared to the adjacent exposed rock. At high tide, when these nooks and crannies are all submerged, they then provide shelter from wave action. As a result, natural intertidal reefs have a higher species richness, which is the number of species that live there, than coastal structures do. Artificial rock pools are one of many designs that come under the broad heading of eco-engineering, which is an emerging field of science that looks at how things can be engineered in a more eco-friendly manner. Quite often it refers specifically to how man-made construction and engineering can be adapted to accommodate habitat for wildlife, often applying features we see in natural habitats. Other examples of eco-engineering designs include artificial reefs, tiles that can be fitted to structures that provide cracks and crevices, and the drilling of grooves and pits into concrete or stone. The artificial rock pools by the Marinef project are one of four different marine eco-engineering designs produced by the project. Artificial rock pools have been deployed in various iterations around the world, such as New York, Sydney Harbour, the Isle of Wight and Gibraltar, and have been referred to as tide pools, flower pots and plant boxes. Artificial rock pools provide surfaces of different orientations, an area that retains water and the opportunity to introduce cracks and crevices and rougher surface textures. It's no surprise that they have been successful in boosting biodiversity, with more species found on the artificial rock pools than the coastal structure, including mobile fauna such as fish and crabs. As eco-engineering is a relatively new concept in coastal engineering, there are, of course, more questions that need answers before such designs can be integrated confidently into future coastal planning on a larger scale. This is where the Marinef project comes in. The Marinef project is testing two experimental designs across four locations in the UK and France with over 140 rock pools, involving some of the largest artificial rock pool installations to date. The concrete formulas for the rock pools have been tested for durability by assessing mechanical strength and capacity for chloride ion migration. The rock pools will be monitored for biological colonisation over two years to understand how different rock pool groupings might affect what species live on the rock pools. Experiment 1 will take place in Pool Harbour in Dorset and near Yarmouth on the Isle of Wight. Each site will host 45 rock pools with three different arrangements, one rock pool, three rock pools and five rock pools. The aim of this experiment is to see how the number of rock pools within a cluster may affect biodiversity, particularly when looking at the surrounding seawall, dubbed the halo effect. Through this, we will be able to advise coastal practitioners how these features can be best installed 
to maximise their ecological value. Here is an example of how they appear on a sea wall. All the rock pools in this experiment are installed at high water neat level, with gaps between each cluster to prevent overlap. There are also control areas where no rock pools are installed to compare the biodiversity of sea walls with and without the rock pool enhancement. The second experiment focuses more on the influence of vertical elevation, with rock pools installed at three different tidal heights at two different sites in the south of England and on the north of France. Here you can see an example of how this installation appears in practice. The tidal range on the French coast is much greater than the tidal range on the English coast, so we will have an opportunity to see how the application of this installation design is influenced by different tidal ranges. At both sites, the rock pools will be installed between high water neaps and mean tide level. Here we have some examples of the Marinef rock pool. You can see here on the exterior all of these little pockets, all of which have these imperfections and irregularities, so that enhanced microspatial complexity is built into the design of the rock pool exterior itself. The Marinef pool is about 10 centimetres deep and can hold about 2 litres of seawater. The bracket itself, which fixes the rock pool to the sea wall, is made of marine grade stainless steel. It has three perpendicular spokes that stick into the rock pool itself so that it's fully integrated into the concrete body. The Marinef rock pool was designed jointly by the team at Bournemouth University and eco engineering company Articology. Here we can see the dimensions of the rock pool and close ups of those bespoke microspatial features. The Marinef Rock Pool is an adaptation of previous designs by Art Ecology, and the pool has been made deeper than previous designs with the intention of reducing the risk of thermal stress and hypersalinity that occur in shallower intertidal rock pools. The shape of the rock pool also has the added benefit of a shaded underside, as well as casting shade on the coastal structure itself. This will hopefully promote damp and cool conditions that will be important for marine biodiversity as we experience hotter, drier summers in the future. Thanks for watching. There are more videos in the Rockpool series which are listed on screen. Be sure to also visit our social media and the Marinef Project website for more resources.